Dun, 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 dun. That's where I'll be next week. I'll be working at Santa Anita Racetrack. I worked there a couple of years ago. I made about $1,000 working there for two weekends. What I did there was I um, bust the tables. I rang up people for drinks. And then I had to go to the kitchen. And I got those big trays that you have to learn how to carry. I remember I learned how to do that. I remember sometimes I'd go to the computer. Because there they had like an old computer system. So... You'd have to run the card once. You cannot run it twice because if you run it twice, you would freeze up the system and you have to wait another three or four minutes. I think that was one of the hardest jobs. I respect you people who are waiters and waitresses. That was the hardest job I had. I had to remember the drinks. Then I have to, then after that, the bartender got so busy. Okay, I want you to put the ice in. I want you to put the olive in. I want you to start putting a tomato stuff in for whatever you make for the Bloody Marys. I had some rum and coke drinks, uh, tequila. I had to learn how to get the beer. And you had to get now, before it was just Corona. Now it's Corona Premium, Corona Light. That's like three years. So I'm gonna have to get my mind ready to like get all those different drinks out and get those to the people. But you're saying, Martin, why are you working another job? Well, like I told you before, 439. That's all I need to say, man. That, and then I was on the way to work today. I saw like um, on the way somewhere else out and like I saw there was a truck that flipped over on the freeway on the opposite side of the freeway and all the cars are stopped for about five or six miles. And you have one choice when you're stuck in traffic. Are you going to idle or are you going to cut off your gas? Cut your engine off to save the gas. So I just said, man. 439 a gallon and all you have to do is all you have to show for it is you're waiting because a truck flipped over i saw the two big um tow trucks trying to get it flipped over fixed up and pulled out but you just saw like it was up for miles man and i'm just like man i remember when i was paying like 400 dollars a week and i would just freak out when an accident happened because i didn't know you know the slower you drive or you're idling you're wasting gas and that was just miserable. Okay, I'm already down 400. Now I'm stuck in an accident. Now I'm going to be down another 40. This, this could cost me another five. Depends on how many accidents you get into. That's an extra five or ten dollars you have to go spend out of something you haven't you haven't thought about going out and spending. So I said, well, so I said, oh, the state of California, a thousand dollars for a business I closed two years ago. I'm still paying taxes for. Makes no sense to me. So I said, okay, I might as well get out the house. I think I know a quick way to make a thousand. I remember I made about each day I made like your luck, maybe you make a hundred dollars in tips if you're lucky. Or at least you get like a free meal. Hey, I remember back then, man, I'm trying to get rid of my gut right now, man. A meal was good. It was good to eat something other than like peanut butter and jelly, or I think back then I was eating. Campbell's soup, trying to stretch chi to stretch the tuna. I'm telling you, July 2008 opened my eyes. It taught me money is everything, man. That's why you hear, why are you always talk about money, Martin? Because that's it, man. Uh, if you don't have money, unless these Democrats or Republicans are going to give you some type of check, the sec you go get you a Section 8 check or you get your unemployment check or some kind of check other than that you man you, you need to go you got to go out and hustle especially uh, you young people like i tell you if these gas prices keep going up i mean they're already they're going to eat into the christmas season if that eat, they eat into the christmas season and when it comes to january 1st these employers with these logistic companies they're gonna have to find a way to make that make these books right they can take a loss for one year but they're gonna take a loss for two years so they're gonna come look to that warehouse who am I going to cut? Who's not been showing up? I don't have the volume to keep this going on. I mean, my deliveries are getting there, but we're not getting the proper profit. Someone's going to have to take a walk, man. So that's what I tell you. I talk about my Calvin, my friend Calvin and I, we worked in a warehouse. It was two of us in like a warehouse that was at least 14,000 square foot minimum. So it was a big warehouse. They had like an office in front. One big CNC machine and two injection motor machines. And we had a whole lot of space toward the left for all type of products. So him and I ran that. 
and we also put together products. Well, we had we had an order of 10,000 sonic alarms. Him and I did that. We even had to solder and put the, the sonic alarms in the boxes. That was two of us in a giant warehouse before there's anything about a computer. We didn't wear any goggles, a vest. I mean, well, what is that, man? A little outline telling you, you hit something, you're just going to hurt yourself, man. You better pay attention. So I like, I mean, these, these fulfillment places slash warehouse, they got to be overstaffed by at least 50%, I'm thinking. The more I think about it and I drive around, it's like, there's just, there's just no way. I know this Christmas season, I see all the semis parked in front early in the morning. This is October. Usually you don't see a lot of the orders going out toward Christmas until the mid-November. Or, or like, say, November 1st on or mid-November, you see a lot of deliveries going out. But now you see trucks lined up at 5 in the morning on a Tuesday, October 22nd or 23rd. And they haven't even put any type of uh, specials out for Black Friday. These are the guys I keep telling you. They want to get these loads out. Get these loads that they promised someone delivered to the warehouse so they can start their 30 or 90 day billing cycle. All they're caring about is getting paid. So that means on the other end now, you got a warehouse full of stuff and all these trucks are just out. Go get the stuff, man. Take the stuff. Put it there. Let them figure out where to do it. We said we'd get it to them by this date. And then they're just hoping they get their um, payment. And if the company they're working with doesn't go out of business. And then they also hope they're all, some of them are trying to just beat the diesel prices. They know diesel follows gas, so gas is going to go up, and then diesel is going to go up. And they want to make sure, hey, this is what we estimated, and now if that comes in, we spend more diesel than we expected, that's going to eat into their profit too. So that's what I'm saying. I've learned from Grant Cardone, you can't depend on one source of income. you got to always be out there looking for ways to make money make passive income because you know in my time that old man story there was a time interest like was i remember when i was in college interest it was at least three or four percent man you can put some money in and get some real money back now interest rate is basically down to a half a half a percent basically nothing but now if you use your credit card that's 20 percent you do the math I mean, yeah, you, you're better off going to a loan shark. So like I say, this is not the time to get lazy. Don't take the weekends off. And remember, we're going to strive, not survive. Email me, subscribe. Let's get this up to 100 subscribers. Let's do this.